I'm Adam Colella, that is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is board certified physician, takes a medicine specialist. <laughs> you got about another five weeks of the show left in you, brother. And then what? Uh, then you're done. Is that it? I can see it on you. You're prima donna now, ordering people around, you come in with a puss on. That's it. That's who, the beginning of the end. Who does I order around? You know, like when you left your shoes at the uh, photo shoot last week, and you're like trying to get Ann to go pick them up and no, stuff. I was, get some I was help. telling you to pick them up on the way into the TV, and you know. All right, well, let's not get into that. Talk about that off there. Lee Andrioni is here. Leah, I think we first met on the TV, or was it in here? I think it was in here. It was in here, and then you came on uh, the TV. Yeah. And I think that must have been uh, two years ago. What, yes. I don't know what season that was uh, for us, and I don't even know what a season is anymore. Well, but it was, I think it was like batch number two. <laughs> That's how it worked, MTV. Right. We're now on batch number four. Batches, huh? Yeah. Did uh, 65, 65, 65, and now we're doing 100. And, you know, uh, first off, we've done five. I'm already a prick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, five. So, five back at the very beginning. Yeah. I, <laughs> so it's... It was like negative five batch. It's uh, 195 ago. Here's a prick. It, it's trouble, but I wasn't too bad on the last 65 batch. Yeah, because that was sort of split up, and we weren't working that hard then. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Now you're out of control. I'm, now I'm a prima donna again, storming around the st set with uh, just wearing a, a silk bathrobe with an ascot <laughs> hanging out of it, smoking like with a long extension on a cigarette. My hair slicked back. Leah, I went to uh, Leah's uh, record release party for Alchemy, which is her second record. Uh, I we're trying to figure out when the hell that was. Leah and I ju just wore, but I, I think it was like two months ago. I think so too. And uh, Leah played live at this studio where she recorded it, which is uh, in L.A. in a really cool studio. Yeah, uh, Drew, I don't know if you've ever been to any of these studios. I've had a chance to go to three or four in my life, and it's not just a place you record record. It's a, sort of a theme and a mood. You know, the lights are dim, and there's, you know, they pull out the uh, fluorescent bulbs, and they put the purple ones in, and they drape a lot of... Uh, the, the thing that seems to be in vogue now is a sort of uh, Indian Yes, theme. it's an Indian theme, I guess, and very, like, black lighting and reds and blues, and the guy who owns the studio, Jack Joseph Puig, is just the most eccentric guy, which adds... Um, to the character of he's, the studio. He's yeah, amazing. He's, he's like a character that uh, Bronson Pinchold would do in, uh, <laughs> right. in an in a Eddie Murphy movie. You know, and he, yes. so he cornered me and was explaining to me that you know, the different colors had different vibrations and that created different emotions. And wow. You know me, I'm sitting there going, uh, listen, I just want to go home and whack off and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. Uh, whatever, whatever, the, whatever's on the TV, that's what I watch. Do you know? I, I always wonder what Drew's face looks like when you say things like that, and now I know. Just a just a clean slate. Like you want to go home <laughs> just and wipe blank. Off. Yeah, I just have to go and look over at him, and <laughs> it's great. But, but Leah Leah played uh, live and probably did uh, three or four songs, and it was just uh, amazing. Just um, uh, the records are good, but uh, in person, there's this whole sort of uh, emotional thing that you don't uh, that you don't get to see. Unless you see her doing them, and uh, that was a real treat. And she's going to do, I think, Wait, a song or two for yeah, us Yeah, you did tonight. a song here last yeah, time you we were last here, time. Adam. Yeah, all right there, Drew. But <laughs> this is two months ago, and that was two years ago. So okay. this is this is fresh. And then we went out to eat, and we started uh, about 25 people, went to a nice restaurant. We all started getting a little bit drunk. And uh, before you knew it, I was on the phone with uh, Leah's dad. Yes, yeah, 45 minutes talking on, on my a dad. cell phone. On my cell phone, thank you. She lives. Uh, his, his dad lives in San Diego, right? Yeah. Let's talk to him about World War II. Oh well, my it, God. Adam knew like every bit of history about the World War II. He just War. watches that World <laughs> <laughs> that History Channel. You go between the Obviously. porn is the History Channel playing. Oh yeah, I got a song for Adam tonight, by the way. But anyways, yeah. So he talks to my dad. He's asking me all these dates. So eventually, the only way to you know handle the situation was to actually make the call and let you talk to Well, him. I was starting to get into Leah's uh, folks and how they met and where they were and they were in Europe and it was a certain time and I and I was trying to figure out the timeline and it didn't make sense with the war. And oh, I, he was I, so adamant about dates, too. Yeah, I turned out to be right about <laughs> your parents, though, didn't I? Yes, you did. She was like, uh, they met in 49. It's like, no, the war was over. <laughs> Must have been 46. 
Uh, it must have been God. the Philippine. What, what is your nationality or what is your mom's nationality? There's something in there. My father's Italian, but he was born in China. That's where you were That's really what, confused. That was with, and he was in the service, And right? I was even more confused, which is sad. But he was fighting for the good guys. Well, I was trying to tell her that the Italians <laughs> were, were bad. Yeah. They were hey, uh, access. Hey, hey. Mm-hmm. They were the bad guys. Well, I mean, not bad people, yeah, just... Uh, just they just made bad decisions. Right, right. We should write a book uh, called that. Anyway, uh, Leah's going to be going out on tour, and uh, we're going to be hearing stuff off the record. And she's going to you going to do the porn song uh, yeah. for us. Oh yes, <laughs> the porn song. Very nice. It was uh, written with me in mind. <laughs> so I'll tell you what. We'll uh, take some calls, and uh, then uh, the next break we'll hear uh, Leah play live. Oops. Uh huh. That seems bad. I'm going to press another line. Megan. Yeah. You're 21. That's right. I uh, recently gave my boyfriend an ultimatum to quit smoking pot or I was going to have to leave him. He said he needed some time to wean himself and, quote-unquote, get it out of his system. I'm wondering if I should give him this time or just hit the road. Uh, how long has he been smoking it? Uh, probably about three years or so. Hmm. He wanted to sort of slowly curtail his marijuana use. Right. I guess you could say that. I, basically, he says he's just not done with it yet. Oh, well, that's different. Well, he's telling me to F off. Yeah, I not mean, done is not done. That's yeah. it. He's not saying I'm not going to quit cold turkey. And, and and people don't quit pot if they're addicted. They they need treatment. They really do. It's How much? Very he, says, he says he'll be done with it in six months at the outside. Yeah, then he'll just pick up another drug to replace it. You, you, people, I want to actually he's not going to be done with it in six months. He won't be done in six months. But if yeah. he is, it's because he's found speed or alcohol. That's what he's going to get done. It's good, though, that he didn't. Most guys are unrealistic, and they just go by Saturday. Yeah, and they don't even think that many days in advance, and before you know it, it's Saturday. This guy's smart. He gave himself six months. Yeah. How uh, How old is he? He's uh, just turned twenty two today. <laughs> and he's only been smoking for about three years. Yeah. And well, another angle is that he used to be really shy before he started smoking it, and now he's like more outgoing. And I think that he thinks if he doesn't do it anymore, that he'll like be that you know shy, geeky. Is he get stoned every day? No, but for like every other day, just as bad. Mm, well, if you think he gets stoned every other day, he probably gets stoned every day because he knows you're kind of uptight about it. Well, I'm not that uptight. I recently just quit myself. All right, but why? Why do you want him to quit? <laughs> okay, let's see. I just, I guess, I judge by it. I don't want my kids to do it, so I don't think it's okay. And also, my dad always did it and ignored me and my brother. And uh, so it has some I don't me- want that. Yeah, and yet you found yourself a nice stoner just like Dad. Yeah, it was really easy, too. That's no, a good n- song title. <laughs> no, but the I point is... I stoner just like Girl like, yeah. you, you sought it out. You sought that out. Now you're going to change it. You can't change it. He has to change himself. He, you can't make him change. I oh, realize that I can't make the, him change. I mean, change. It's, it's like you're acting out a childhood fantasy. You've, got, you've found Dad. Now I'm going to make him quit pot, smoking pot and really pay attention to me the way I always wanted him to. The only thing you can do is go to some ACA meeting, adult children, alcoholics, or Al-Anon, and work on yourself. And then see if you still want to be in this relationship, which I suspect if you really do a recovery program, you won't. No, once you get rid of the need uh, and the lure of the weed, you don't need it anymore. Well, once that's you don't, what drew you in. Yeah, that, that not, was, not the weed so much as that, as that. No, that he was smoking it right, and that you were going to correct the past. Yeah. That's what everyone does in their relationships, or so I've learned from this show, is uh, somebody screws them over for a while, and then... They go out their whole life, becomes this sort of quest to correct what's what cannot be corrected. What's ingrained. Yeah, it's sort of like um, you were on the Titanic as a kid, so you spend the rest of your life just uh, cruising. On ships. At, on ships, trying Wait, to... Waiting, to, waiting for one to go down that you can pull up out of the out of the depths as it goes down. Right, it's a, it's a bad and plan. And you're just about as, lucky to, about, about as likely to do that. Right, it was, uh, it was bad enough that you were on the first one. Right. I guess you should ask yourself... How badly you're going to ch- how badly you're going to want to change if someone wants to change you and realize no one's going to want to change for you. What you see is what you get. In, in people, I have found because uh, Lord knows everyone I grew up with got into pot or booze or, or got into and, and that th- those were considered the uh, valid Victorians of of my neighborhood. The guys who were just smoking pot got like an award. I bet every every year that uh, they weren't smoking crack, but. These guys quit when they were ready to quit, and it wasn't when they were 22 or 23. Well, and they weren't just a pot then, were they? 
Uh, no, the ones that were just a pot are still smoking weed. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> now, but... And are trying to graduate from college. Even the ones... 19th that, year, right? Uh, yeah, but junior college, we feel. Okay. Uh, but... No, the ones the ones that got into uh, oh. coke and, and booze and all that. I mean, they weren't near anything until they were uh, early thirties. Yeah, no way were you going to talk them out of it at twenty one, twenty two, and s no girlfriend, no way. So uh, that's more her problem than it is his, and yep. I, I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> Joe, hey, how's it going? You're twenty five. Yep. Hey, if uh, I'm belching up garlic or something tonight, uh, go ahead and say it. Because I, I <laughs> ate like eight cloves of garlic That's before I nice. came I here. I appreciate you doing that before you come over here. About <laughs> True that. hates that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. True. You're, you're the one who really reacts to that? Yeah. Uh, well, not to the smell, but if I ingest garlic, I just get ill. No, but when I belch up after I've been eating something weird in the studio, you get weird, right? I get weird. I, I get nauseated. Are you okay. warning us right now? <laughs> <laughs> Drew and I were in the airport in, in uh, Chicago, and we ordered a pizza. And while Drew wasn't looking, and because I didn't know it, and this is the way I like my pizza, I grabbed a whole big thing of garlic powder. I just started shaking it feverishly on top of the thing because I love a ton of garlic powder on my pizza. I shook it over the whole thing. Drew turned around, looked at me, and went, uh, "It's wrong. I can't eat it." I'm done. It's wrong. And I felt bad for like ten minutes, and uh, about two minutes, and then I went, "All right, well, I'll eat it." Two minutes, I didn't even notice he took a beat. I ate it, and then I gave him the crust. <laughs> <laughs> I blew on it and gave him the crust. Hey, Joe? Yeah? What's up with you? Okay, well, I've got this kind of dilemma here. Um, a good buddy of mine is over in Germany. He's teaching on, a, uh, on an army base over there, and he's there for the year. And um, since he told me he was going over there, you know, he and I have been making these plans to get together. And the only time he has off since he's teaching is around Christmas time and, and uh, New Year's. And his birthday is like the second of January, so I was thinking, well, I'll go over around Christmas time, take some time off work, and just stay there until his birthday. And you know, he and I can travel and hang out, and everything's cool. Well, at the time when we started making these plans, I wasn't really uh, uh, spoken very for. Serious with my girlfriend, right. and now my girlfriend really wants me to stay home with her for New Year's Eve. Mm. And I'm I'm a little torn, you know, and I. I'm not, like, going to be callous or anything. Maybe we had to do the personal rating system on this guy and see if he matches with his girlfriend. That's a good... Uh, we we haven't done that. Ever. Have we done that on the radio ever? Brother, our book came out today. And that's uh, that's in the book, and yeah. that's your uh, segue? No, just... Uh, I heard you were looking through bookstores today. I did. I went and looked around. They're not around <laughs> not <laughs> anywhere. What's your yeah. book called? What's your I told you he's turned into a monster. Look at him. What's the book called? I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> No, I don't. I, I don't know what it's called. It's called like Drew and Adam, the yeah. book, or yeah. something. It, yeah. it doesn't. It, it, it can't have the words "love line" or the name "love line" in it for some sort of legal reason or something. But uh, I told you, you're turning into a uh, an animal, Drew. How many bookstores you look in? One. Oh, be serious. What? You looked in one, and your wife looked in fifteen, right? <laughs> she looked in fifteen. Right. She didn't find it. <laughs> no, it's good. Not. It serves you right, Joe. Yeah. All right, well, uh, oh, I think what we're going to do is, I don't uh, I don't have the personal rating system in front of me. Do you remember it, Drew? Yeah. Yeah, but he can't judge for his girlfriend, I don't think. I don't know. I, is it you're supposed to judge for yourself whether you match up? Uh, i got to think about this one. I'm a little sleep deprived. Joe? Yeah. I'm just going to answer. Let's just answer uh, Joe's uh, question. It, it, the point is that she's being kind of a pain in the butt. And uh, it's un feel, yeah. and it's understandable early in a relationship that people feel insecure and they want to spend as much time as possible together. But reality is, a healthy relationship is about two people living their lives together. How long? How long are you talking about going out of town for? I'm going out of town for about a week and, and a few days. She, like she is just insecure. Hey, that's, she not, that's not much. Are you <laughs> trustworthy? I'm not sure. That's, oh, that's, there you well, go. There's, there's, I think she's picking up on that. I'm yeah. not going there to hook up. Yeah, but she's afraid you will, and if you're kind of that way, that's that's why she's no, no, insecure. No, that's that's not it. How old is she? She's 24. Okay. She's a year younger. All right. Mm -hmm. And she's in grad school now, and, and I kind of, I mean, I totally understand her wanting me to be around for how? New Year's Eve, because that's how, I mean, everyone spends New Year's Eve with their boyfriend or girlfriend. But I know. my buddy, like, made special plans. Like, his girlfriend isn't going over there until yeah, yeah. a week later. Listen, Joe, you don't have to convince us. Yeah. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> you, this is Europe. It's your buddy. You're young. It's not something you get an opportunity to do very often. Uh, this is a fairly new relationship. You're only going to be gone uh, 10, 11 days. And women especially, maybe Leah can uh, shed some light on this, to me, I don't really, 
and and I may be worse uh, than most, but the the day doesn't really matter as much as the time. I mean, my birthday, her birthday, uh, New Year's, Fourth of July. It doesn't really matter. It's just as much as I, that. There's quality time you spend together. Yeah, that doesn't really matter either. It kind of oh. depends on what's on TV. <laughs> no, but what, 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 time every day together. Well, that's uh, what I'm saying is, is women get really into it's my birthday. Why can't you be here? Or it's New Year's. We should be. And I agree, it's nice to be with the one you love on New Year's. On the other hand, you'll be at a party. You'll be drunk. You'll be having a good time. And if you saw your girlfriend the following weekend because she was out of town or whatever. You could have a good time with her then. I think it just symbolizes a sacrifice. You know, if you actually realize that that was her birthday and that she would want to... It's not her birthday. Well, she's speaking hypothetically. Right. Then, you know, or New Year's, okay. Then it's like, it just symbolizes that you're actually giving up something to be with her. Mm -hmm. But I I think Mm -hmm. for women, uh, symbolism in relationships carries more weight than it does gestures yeah with men like like i'll give you for instance if my girlfriend's birthday is uh on a thursday and i'm working thursday night as i would do i would tell her i will go out friday i don't work friday night that'll be your birthday night and if i don't talk to her on thursday it's no big deal because her birthday is now friday i totally think he should go i mean it's like a you know a chance that he shouldn't give up it's an opportunity he shouldn't lose i'm just saying what she might be thinking right i would go to europe yeah and i think she's picking up a little bit on that uh joe's joe's vibe and it's early in the relationship which is she's trying to assess a joe quick question joe yeah. How did you meet your current girlfriend? Oh, long story. My yeah. mom introduced us. Uh, she's been up here. She moved up here from uh, Florida a while okay. back. Did, like, you ha- did you have another not, girlfriend at the time? I'm not interested, yeah. but did you cheat on anybody? Did you steal her away? Were you in another relationship? No, no. Well, I was kind of in a oh. really, really long-distance relationship. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, Had a little, Joe. see? <laughs> he said no three times. Did you have a girlfriend? Uh, well, kind of. And Joe's kind of full of it. Mm, well, first off, the guy, he's 25, his name's Joe. He's got a buddy in the military, and he's going to swing. Yeah, but I said, are you mice. trustworthy? And he said, I don't know. Yeah. That's scary. She's picking up on that, yeah. and my uh, hunch or my suspicion was correct in that when she met him, he was sort of cheating on someone in a long-distance yeah. uh, way. Yeah. yeah. And uh, women aren't stupid. They know. Uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, which I still can't uh, figure out. Unless a male goose, a female goose, is called a gander. I looked that up, Drew. We have fun looking up words. It's a male know. goose to gander. Though. All right. Well, one of them's got to be a chick goose, because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Doesn't mean anything unless one of them's a chick, right? Yeah. They have chick gooses. That, that even sounds uh, funny. All right. Leah Andreon is here. She's going to set up her uh, guitar. And uh, is Richie going to come in here? And Richie Cotson, yes. Richie's uh, going to be playing the guitar, right? Yes. Right. So, Gander, uh, the adult male goose. All righty, then. You see what you learn on this show? You learn about the penis and the goose. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with some uh, live playing from Lala. That fax number. Drew, you got a fax there? I think it's the first one I've seen. Yeah, it's Ken's got some skin lesions he's worried about. Uh, and there is no way I can tell what he's talking about from his description, so he needs to see a dermatologist. Especially since it's on his ass, right? It is on his anus, right around my anus, it says. Oh, really? Right on the ring inside, to quote Ken. The ring inside? The yeah. sphincter. Ooh, yeah, that's rough. That does not sound good. Whoop. You don't sound good either, well, man. My, there you go, uh, try now. Right. I said that does not sound good. But didn't I hear that someone came down here a few days ago and you actually did like some kind of yeah. examination here? Yeah. And it, it, it confirmed my feelings about skin lesions and trying to interpret what people are telling me about them. I mean, even when I've got everything in front of me and I can look at them, I have to make these judgment calls. They're very hard to make sometimes. Turned out the guy no had way. a Mike and Ike stuck to his pecker. <laughs> <laughs> and over the phone, and Drew just couldn't figure it out. No, he just, it didn't sound that at all. Drew just flicked it right off. Right? Sure, do you feel like, did you need, like, gloves, gloves. and everything? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, he brought gloves. Oh, thank you. Little, I'm little, so happy about that. Little pack of gloves. Like, uh, it's like you're smuggling heroin or something, and you're like one of those mules <laughs> that comes across the border. I mean, it's a little vacuum-packed, little cellophane thing, and uh, stuck those gloves in there. You just chuck those, right? Then I swallow them afterwards. <laughs> That's oh, right. God. Then he craps a big glove balloon. <laughs> well, he actually farts a glove balloon. All right. Uh, 
R- Richie, what's your last name? I'm sorry, I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't get it. I got the mic, so I'll answer for him. Kotzen. Uh, Richie Kotzen. <laughs> yeah, is this here. is like a, a guitar god I've been following for way too long, and I finally got him in my band, so I'm very happy. Did you play on the album, Richie? Or uh, Leah? Did uh, Richie play on the album? He yeah. doesn't have a mic. He did not play on the album because I. I had not gotten a hold of him yet, but we are now recording together, so. So, Richie, when you see Leah live, uh, you will see Richie with him? Yes. All right. And if not, just pretend whoever's playing the guitar is Richie. You're yeah, not gonna just know. call him Richie. Not yeah. a big deal. He'll nod, and that'll be it. <laughs> All right, so uh, something uh, off the new album, Alchemy. Do you, uh, does it need any setup, or? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Well, here she is, Leah Andriani. That was for you, Adam. All right. <laughs> that sounded great. Uh, nice playing, you. Richie. Yeah. Porn. You can find uh, Leah at the uh, Venus Fair <laughs> in uh, North Hollywood doing that ditty. Why do you feel somewhat embarrassed, Adam? Why? Like touching song. Oh, yeah, I know, but I don't know. Taking uh, my beloved porn and making a mockery out of it. by making mockery putting, out Setting it. music to it. Yes, but just pointing out the poignancy of... Uh, I think that was an homage to porn. I don't think. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, all right. Well, what was the what was the um, I think I'm what was behind that? I think song? I'm leaving you both in the lurch so that I stay on positive sides <laughs> with both of you. <laughs> I just want to make friends here. Um, you know what? It's actually I am not judging it. I'm not giving it a negative or a positive. I'm just looking at pornography and geez, it was all over the place in the studio while I was making the record. So I did a little investigating. I went and got a bunch of magazines, and I watched a couple of uh, movies, my producer's movies, to be exact. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know. I'm guessing that may have been the gay variety. <laughs> it's not nice. Really? <laughs> it had to be. Please, I met Serge. What was his name? Uh, Serge. <laughs> Any guys that sculpt their facial hair too much, you know? Okay, Either the devil I'm... or gay. <laughs> Okay, I'm skipping All on right, this. Okay. Okay. Anyways, so, yeah. And then the song kind of alluded to maybe seeing people you knew or know, <coughs> or people um, who get drawn into that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think that, it, you know, for me, it's like, for definitely, I think for different kinds of people, pornography could mean a bunch of different things, and maybe it's just like that, that one smile that totally turns you on, or maybe it is the magazine and, you know, the, the beautiful naked woman in front of me, or whatever, you know, who knows. Actually, I taped pictures all over my room when I wrote that song and changed all the light bulbs and made, like, this psychotic environment for myself. And (laughs) I fell asleep in the midst of writing the song, and someone from downstairs came up into my room. There's pictures taped all over the place, so I look like a, you know, basket case. But anyways, I got a song out of it, right? Yeah, it sounded great. And, uh... Didn't Leah sound good? Live? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. What a voice! I mean, nice. uh, and uh, not only good voice, but uh, some people have good voices, and then some people have unique voices. But that's both. Yeah. Which is uh, a nice and rare combination. Oh, thank you. Alchemy is the uh, name of the CD. You can find porn on there and uh, many other songs. All right, we'll uh, take another call, and then uh, you guys do another song later on uh, tonight. Cool. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. You're 21. Yeah, absolutely. What's going um, on? Adam, Drew, good to talk to you guys. Leah, beautiful song. Oh, thank you. Um, basically, what's going on is I've been dating the same girl on and off for three years. Um, she has some serious abandonment issues. I have manic depression, uh, anxiety and panic disorder, and I'm a recovering drug addict. Uh-huh. I've been clean for about five months now. Okay. Uh, I also suffer from preventricular contractions in my heart. That's nothing. And... Uh, um, Basically, why is that normal? Why do you bring that up? That's a normal thing. Well, it's something that contributes to my anxiety and my mood swings and things like that. Everybody has that, Mike. Okay, they're but they're very pro- predominant with me. I feel them quite a bit. Okay, there's and extra beats. Skip the uh, palpitations. Yeah. Really? They're uh, they're basically I get a regular schedule of four beats and then one slows and it gives me an extra strong beat after on the fifth. And then it starts Normal. the cycle all over again. But you, you walk around counting, right? Well, only when I need to. When I'm sitting around doing nothing, I, and I have nothing better to do except, you know, explore it and figure out what's I mean, going if you on. if you've been a drug addict, especially, stimulants, cocaine, Yeah. that's how you get that. You know, you know that's pretty mm. routine. Does it ever go back? Sometimes. It doesn't, it doesn't have any real prognostic significance. You but, don't really sit there and count your heartbeats, do you? Because that would drive you crazy. Yeah, it, it does. A little you bit, you should not I do that. Not well, well not. guys like Mike get convinced that it means their heart's going to stop. 
and it has nothing to do with that. Right. Uh. Okay. Um, but the basic thing is, um, lately we've been uh, on for about three and a half months. All we do now, I mean, when we start up, it's a great relationship. We learn from why our did, Why did you start up to one month into your sobriety? Um, I don't know. I was feeling much better about myself after starting Mike, the sobriety and things were going right. Well. And, w and were you following directions? Uh, as far as? Not dating? Not starting any new relationships? Not making any changes in your life? Well, basically, the thing was, this is not very big of a change because we had been going out for about three years on and off. This was just something that, you know... It felt like I needed to get back into. I needed to fulfill some pieces of my life. That well, what gone. you're doing, when you start a relationship at that stage in your recovery, what you're doing is filling in where, you're, where you don't want to go in your recovery and taking a hostage to make yourself feel better so you don't have to feel the more difficult feelings that you need to go through in order for your recovery to be complete. Okay. And uh, so now you've, now you've taken this addictive relationship and just slammed it right back in there keep the cycle going well what's your the question thing, maybe he has well the thing to me is uh to both of us we are at the stage where it feels like we're the only people we've uh, ever loved in our lives and uh i'm at the point right now where all we do is fight all the time sure real chaos so you guys telephone conversations in person and then we just make love afterwards and everything seems to be fine until the next time we get together hey it's got to suck though you got one person you love in your life and all you do is fight with them yeah, it does. It does. But the thing is, she's the kind of person who has a lot of abandonment issues and things like that, and she doesn't want me to leave. It's like there's a constant game where she's trying to get me to say I love her all the time. Mm -hmm. She's doing the same to me. I feel trapped. I feel like if I well, break I... this off, I'm going to feel guilty for the rest of my life for ruining hers. What does your sponsor say? I don't have a sponsor. Mike, your recovery I'm... is in a shit... I can't Ooh. say that. Drew, hey, Brett... This, this I just use the S word. This recovery, I think, uh, this, my God. this recovery is. This I is no recovery. He's a prima donna. You know, he's, he's well, taking on the FCC. My recovery is, I've, Mike, this isn't a recovery. I've been in recovery programs many times. That's not recovery. To a point in my life, Mike, this being time in recovery, I just quit myself. Being in recovery many times is not being in recovery. You're right. It's I wasn't stopping. ready to do it. This yeah. time I was. Well, I you're not stopped. doing it. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. It's not how people. What you, you want? Cocaine or what other drugs were you taking? Um, mostly marijuana was my drug of choice. I had a bout with cocaine about two years ago, but I stopped that. I mean, this is all part of the addictive cycle. What you're in with this relationship is an addictive relationship. You're not changing it. This is Matt Campbell, and you're listening to Loveline with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Yeah. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Uh, Goo Goo Dolls are going to be in here tomorrow night. Then, um... Uh, I was just looking at the uh, schedule. Okay, so uh, Lee Andreone tonight, Goo Goo Dolls uh, tomorrow night. Alchemy is the name of the CD. You heard her play uh, something live off it, and I think uh, we'll hear something off the CD and then maybe hear another live song at some point this evening, too. Now, when we left off, we were speaking to Diana. Diana's 20. She weighed 260 in high school. She's down to 170 now, but... Uh, she wants to get down to 130. Mm, yeah. The real question, though, is why she feels so nauseated at the sight of food. Right? Right. And we don't know. Right. And we'll find out. Diana, is that right? Yeah, it's mm. right. Have you been nauseated since high school? Well, I mean, it, it was after high school, really, that, like... That this started after out. After high school. Do, are you ever able to eat a normal meal? No, I eat small meals. Do you throw up? No, I don't throw up. I always feel like I want to throw Did up. Did you ever cause yourself to do that? No. I, I mean, I try to hold it in. I, you know, I don't really want to. How did you lose all that weight? Uh, I really don't know. I was, like, thinking I was being a diabetic or whatever, but, I mean, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm not. How did you, you mean the weight just came off spontaneously? Yeah, I mean, I lost just all of a sudden. I just lost. Well, Diana, you need to see a doctor, okay? I, well, see, that's the thing. I see my doctor and everything, and I tell him if there's anything wrong with me, if I'm a diabetic, and he tells me, no, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, it's just... Well, did you have some sort of lifestyle change that... No, well, I mean, I got married, but... Yeah, but that's usually good for about 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. saying, I, I don't know if it was on this show or what the hell, or where the hell I was, but I was saying, you know, all you uh, women 
who diet feverishly before the weddings. I've been going to a lot of weddings oh, lately, no. and women always diet, you know, like two weeks so they can get real slim for the wedding. You're shooting yourself in the foot, all, and all that happens is five years later when people come over the house and they see the wedding picture, they go, oh, Jesus Christ, you ballooned up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Which they don't realize is you were abnormally skinny for what you... You're probably at your normal weight. It's just you dropped 20 for the wedding and then immediately packed it back on, but you have all those pictures. I think you should pack on 50 pounds for the wedding, and then when people come over, they see the wedding pictures and go... Christ, you look great. I don't know. I just hear the I sound of thousands you, look of young, at you. I hear the sound of thousands of young people vomiting in the background. But Dad, I'm talking about packing on weight. And gee, honey, you ballooned up. <laughs> There's, I, but it's so funny. Every time I go to someone's house who's been married for uh, over eight years, I always look at and male and female. And believe me, guys pack on as much weight as women do. It's just they don't care. Guys get fat when they get married, too. It's just, uh, what do they care? They're bald, too, and, uh, you know, they're walking around in their underpants. It doesn't matter. But people, the women are the ones who died into the wedding. Yeah. And there's two pictures I decided last week that you've got to rally for. Your, um, your senior portrait, your senior picture in the yearbook, yes. and your wedding photos. These are the, you'll be forever judged. Because they follow you everywhere. The yearbook. The year Those are the ones that follow me around. The senior year uh, is what. Those things? I haven't you, seen them. Here's the deal. Your senior picture is what you look like before you were 20 for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? That's the one everyone goes off of. It's not the one you took in Pop Warner or Little League Baseball or the ninth grade or camp or uh, with your buddies. It's the senior picture, and then it goes to the wedding, and after that, I don't know. That is a frightening thought, too. Well, Diana, listen, uh, I would not make any assumptions about what is causing these symptoms until you had a thorough and complete medical evaluation, okay? Yeah, I mean, it scared me because a neighbor of mine said that she had stomach cancer and she just, like, lost it all. And, well, I mean, stomach cancer, me, you, so yeah, I mean, yes, stomach cancer can be nausea and, and difficulty with early f feelings of fullness and vomiting and things, but not for three years, okay? There's something going on. It may just be an esophageal. I mean, there's so many possibilities. I mean, it's a, basically textbooks of gastroenterology would describe weight loss and nausea. But she'd and, be down lower than 170, right, right if this but, was continuing. The point is there is nothing specific yet indicated by what she is describing, and she needs a much more thorough, objective right. evaluation. Well, she could have uh, called baby fat, too. I she mean, may have grown out of it. She needs to have an endoscopy. She nausea every time, every time she eats. She needs to have an endoscopy. You don't think it's like, yeah, I mean, is it from eating, or is it the thought of the look, food? Look, it may be have a psychological well, basis, I mean, but you can't assume that. Hold on, we're not done arguing about you, your condition. You, you, the, it, is, it is incumbent on a physician to thoroughly rule out medical causes, because uh, okay. you'd be amazed how, how often medical problems cause psychiatric symptoms. I mean, these aren't even specifically psychiatric symptoms, but something like depression. It's very common for depression to be precipitated by a medical problem. Maybe she's intentionally turned herself off of food so that every time she looks at food, it's nauseating, and then she's losing the weight that she's wanted to lose for however many years. But the, the, we, we could go around and around about the possibilities, but the important thing right now is that she get a complete evaluation. Hey, let's going go on. around one more time. Diana, uh -huh. <laughs> how miserable were you in high school at 270? Um... I wasn't, I mean, I was not uh, miserable. I was just, I guess I was just there. I, didn't, I wasn't popular or nothing. I wasn't all joyful. But I was just a regular person. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not a woman and uh, I'm not 270, but I, although you know, I'm sneaking up on it pretty quick, <laughs> I, I have always said that I would think the greatest hell would to be a, a female in, you know, the 11th grade and be... 125 pounds overweight. I mean, in terms of our society and uh, how you're judged and all the expectations and the age you're at and all the self-conscious feelings and everything, being that, being that age, being in the middle of high school, I, I mean, I couldn't imagine a worse fate. You want to fit in so badly and for all the wrong reasons Oh, in high school. Mm -hmm. Did you have a tough time in high school? Yeah, actually, in my own way, you know, I'm not with weight, luckily, but. But you're like, hey, you're like one of those creative types. I was types kind of one of those tortured. loner types that I, I don't know, but yeah, maybe I was sometimes tortured. But I spent a lot of time in a room, you know, like writing music or doing weird things and not going to the parties and you know doing the normal thing. Yeah, was was that painful? No, I enjoyed it. I was making okay. music. So she's fine. All right. so I'm cool. You you and I were. <laughs> I had my music in high school. Too, you were out of control in high school, huh? 
I, I just I played football and baseball. I was just a jock. I was a ceramics major. He learned to put water up his ass to squirt oh, it out. Oh, great. Did you hear about this? <laughs> no. It wasn't you know like what? they had a seminar or anything. <laughs> you didn't? <laughs> you seemed to taught all your friends. All right. Drew, um, I was not the grandfather of that. I'm feeling yeah. left out, Adam. Um, left out. All right. Afterwards, I'll, afterwards. I'll tell you after all the right. show because uh, I'm tell her tired now. of bringing it up. Well, well, one of my friends put a jacuzzi jet in his ass. He squirted water out of it. Oh, it my went mom's about 20 feet. <laughs> hey, you know, we were poor. Became... First off, let me tell you, there was no Nintendo. <laughs> all right? All you had was a hose in your ass back then, kids. Imagine me sit, uh, sit my son down and explain to him, we didn't have your highfalutin uh, Game Boys and Nintendos and your big screen TVs and your battery-operated remote-controlled cars. All we had was a bucket of water, our anuses, and our own good wits. And, and gravity. And gravity. <laughs> and, uh, all right. Let's not get into that. All right, let's talk to Anita. Anita, what's going on? Thank God my grandma's out of town. <laughs> yeah, I have a call? question. Yes. I have um, a pregnancy. It's called a previal pregnancy. Previa. Placenta previa. Yeah, something like that. And oh, so it's, a, it's a town in Orange County. Anita, too, it's your pregnancy. you got to learn about this stuff. Please, come on. It's a serious condition, potentially. You, you know, it's funny. Um, w people calling this show and describing their condition is like when uh, your girlfriend goes to the mechanic and explains what he said about the car. Need new uh, ulcerate, ulcerator, ulcerator, <laughs> alternator, alternator. Yes, that's it. But it's it's you. I mean, the car is just the car. And who cares? Our, our listeners, they can't figure out what medication they're on. Drew has to explain it to them. It's you and a baby now. I, lo I love when he does that. <laughs> So you have uh, placenta previa. What's yeah. that mean? It's the placenta is lying over the cervix, and uh, it's a kind of a potentially dangerous condition. Yeah, um, I was wondering. My doctor told me that I couldn't have intercourse. Right. And why? You don't want. You, it's a, you, this thing can abort. I mean, this is a, it can bleed. You can get real serious problems from it. I should have told her that three months ago. Of course. Mm. How long far in the pregnancy are you? Four months. Okay, so you need to just lay. Take it easy. Lay low. Okay. My question was, can you do like? Oral sex and stuff like that, or is it just? You mean on you? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Although that can stimulate contractions, and all things being equal, it's probably better if you don't. Yeah, and he don't need a nose full of placenta. You don't get over <laughs> that. I mean, that, that's at least eight years of intensive therapy. You may not go there again. That's uh, like almost drowning in a you pool. Should, when you should kid. ask your gynecologist, your obstetrician, about that specifically. But, uh, <laughs> but the only problem is hey, hey, why is that funny? <laughs> why is that funny? <laughs> it's just funny. That's all. I mean, the guy says, "Listen, no sex," and you go right to the oral part, and then the well, next the, logical step is the vibrator. Well, the question is: is orgasm is orgasmic function to be withheld? Should, should you not have an orgasm? Right. So it's not just the fear of rupturing the placenta. Well, it's you don't want a a, a, gen, a penis in there stimulating things. We for should sure. measure the tongue. Yeah, for I, sure. could, I could make mm, it. You just don't. I just don't the contraction there. I mean, it's it, it's a, it can. You know, you want this pregnancy. You want to see this pregnancy through, right, Anita? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just you know, where's your boyfriend? Just got to get it together for a couple more months. Can, can you, you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Anita, if you can't get this together on behalf of this child, I am really concerned. Well, my husband and me, we have a pretty good sex life. Anita? <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, Drew is disgusted at all he is. Hey, Anita. Yeah. You have, you have a life in the balance here. Oh, I know. I don't want to do any, anything if it's going to harm the baby. I just had a question wondering if I could. Okay. Well, if, I, if it's going to affect the baby in any way, I don't want to do it. All right, don't I mean, do it. I can put it off hold. No, no, there you go. Okay. And don't do it. All right, well, ask the gynecologist and see what he says. He, I mean, he, that's why I'm asking you. He didn't tell me I can have oral sex or anything like that. He just said right. sex. Right, but I think when he said sex, he he may have meant it, meant it in a very broad way, meaning don't have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. What about the butt love? No. The what? No, no, no Same butt love? No. Same, Same thing? thing? Really? You just want to lay low with this thing. All right. Hey, Anita? Yep. But don't push. I mean, it's it's like, it, it, I, I don't know, it's like if, if the guy said, uh, uh, all right, don't drink any scotch, and you want it, is beer okay, or is gin yeah, all right? exactly. He's saying don't take the alcohol in. Right. I think. Well, well, just, let her follow it up and ask him. Yeah, but it's a little disturbing to me that when you say, hey, just get together for like four months, just take it easy. Well, <laughs> I, 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 
I don't want to. Uh, hey, it's a hey, this is the least of the things you're going to have to get together on behalf of this child. I mean, just to get used to it. And this is the beauty of the 18-year-old pregnancy, by the way. He, I can. Um, I couldn't imagine. I, I couldn't imagine a, a greater responsibility than being in charge of molding somebody. It's not even you're in charge of them. You you mold them. Whatever they are, whatever they become, that's all through your hands. You're you're like uh, God. And uh, it's just uh, it's frightening. But anyway, she's concerned. Talk to the gynecologist. See what he says. And uh, I then go to the I library. Take it easy. Okay, Drew's pissed. We'll be back. I feel so liquidy. Really? Why? You're listening. I'm on. Hey, to the love line. We're going to take a little 10 second top of the hour break, and we'll be right back in 10 seconds. And for Engineer Mike, and uh, as I've said before, every engineer has their own sort of signature, the Mike's Hot movement they use. Some guys just look at you and blink. Who's Other that? guys give you the big finger. It's like being a baseball umpire. Some guys really do that big blown out, and they wave their arm around, and other guys just sort of look toward the dugout. <laughs> But when you get used to a guy pointing the finger at you, giving it like like he's on the uh, deck of a carrier sending a plane off the end, you get used to that, and then you get uh, Engineer Brett over here just he's just nodding his head at me. Some, uh, some of them just do this. Nodding my head at him. Just look up at you. Eyebrow, maybe? Yeah. Coop. Just, just look Coop. Just looks up. Coop. Yeah, Coop was, uh, he was the black engineer. He was really cool. And he'd just kind of look up at you and maybe wink or something. And you, you'd no. wink. Not compared to Coop. No, not Coop. And you wink back at Coop before you know it, you're winking at each other for 10 minutes. You didn't know the mic was uh, on. I went out in the studio and he goes, you're cranky. Me. Yeah, you are. You're kind of pissing me off, actually. All right. Oh, I'm in the middle of these off. two, by the way, everybody. Drew, you are overworked, not underpaid, but you're strung out and you're going insane. I mean, you better just uh, you better just peel back that schedule a little bit. You know, Drew won't say no to anything. Drew will be at the hospital in the morning. Then he'll uh, be doing some lecture in in the late morning. Then he'll do four TV shows. Then he'll come over here, and uh, somebody will stop in the street and ask him a question. He'll talk to him for forty five minutes <laughs> in an airport about nothing. You you got to start you you got to start managing your time. You got to say no to certain things. You gotta you gotta you gotta take time for you. Oh God! Let me give you a little. Like I said, example. you're pissing me off, Adam. <laughs> Lee Andrioni's in the background, by the way. I had an audition for a guy who made uh, the two movies. Let's see. I, I'm gonna have to think of this. Bridge one. of the River Kwai and, <laughs> and Ben Hur. No, in the Company of Men, I think it was. Is that the uh, cool, the one yeah. I'm thinking of? It's a really cool movie. And then the latest. What's his name? Neil LeBute. He did in a company man, and then his latest was, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was supposed to be good, too. Good point. Point is, he's got a third movie coming out. It's uh, supposed to be a great script. I got the script the other day. He wanted me to do the uh, audition. We were doing four shows last Thursday, uh, TV shows, and then, the t and then the radio show, and then four shows on Friday. And they had set the audition up for coming in at 9 in the morning before on Friday. I'm and I you. called him back and said, no, I got to sleep. I can't do four TV shows and get up at eight in the morning. I have to sleep in. I have to sleep eight hours. I'm not going to be worth anything to anyone who's paying me. Yeah, that's right. But all this, I have an obligation the, uh, to my employer. I got to be fresh so I can criticize him when I'm on the all set. All the media stuff is easier to say no to than people that need you when they're sick. Oh, <laughs> it's true. All right. All right. What about me, though, Drew? What about us, more importantly? I don't mean me and you. I mean me and Leah. All right. <laughs> Drew had to come back with the Hippocratic crap. You ready to move forward? Yeah. Do we leave off anywhere? Mm. And, Drew, you got to start being tough with your uh, old complaining um, um, hypochondriac patients. I hear these people. Drew's, uh, Drew's on the phone with these people. And the I think they understand those old people. Between the hearing, the senility, and their general sort of a disdain for youth, uh, they're not going to listen to a goddamn word you say. You yell at them. You hear me? That was a 19-year-old talking. Uh, no. And who was? How old was the woman you said had to go to the hospital 15 times before I yelled into the phone? I can't remember. I remember the moment of you yelling. She had a heart attack and no longer needed to go to the hospital, did she? <laughs> it was. It, it, it's jackass therapy, they call it. <laughs> I was going so insane just sitting in the back of this car listening to him saying the same thing over and over and over again. I just went nuts and yelled at him. Michelle? 
Yeah. So, oh, go to the hospital. <laughs> go to the hospital, you old bag, and I hope they bury you there. Michelle? Yeah. All right, what's going on? Um, well, God, I don't know where to start. Can I first compliment you guys? All right. You guys are great. Thanks. You should be God. Right. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Uh, my mom, she, uh, she just recently got broken up with by her girlfriend. And, um... Uh, well, she, she's kind of, like, not in reality. Why? And, um, what does that mean? Her and her girlfriend had built this house, this, you know, house with a 2600 a month mortgage, and she wants us kids to move in with her, pay 400 each, and mm. uh, she's very ma materialistic, and I don't know how to tell her that... Um, that's too much to ask of us, you know. Well, where were you living? H how old are the other kids? Well, like my brother's Six 31. Six and eight. 21, right. 31. He's living well, on 31. his own. And then uh, my my fiance, my fiance and I were living in a, in a house. We're renting for 400 a month. Right. And she wants us to give up that, you know, move 30 miles away from our work and my school. And... Uh, you know, live with her, and I don't know how her, to tell her. Her and her gal pal? No, she's moving out. She's leaving my mom. And so and the whole reason that nobody's willing to tell her the truth is they don't want her to react. Yeah, she's She evidently so reacts rather strongly. Right? You're rational right now. You wouldn't believe How her. long ago did she, her, and your dad break up? Oh, my goodness, when I was six, so that would be about... And, um, and we'll do the math. Twelve years. And did she immediately start in with women? I uh, yeah. She was having affairs before they even um, broke up. Is she bipolar? Uh, no, but she is a recovering alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Did she build the house with her girlfriend? Yes. I mean, they really built it. Yes. They swung the hammer. <laughs> well, no, they, they, they had the plans, they had the blueprints and all that. They threw the wood up on their lumbar rack. All right. It's a little inside joke. I mean, I know they had blueprints and stuff, but were they were they, were they they building? <laughs> they were actually doing the manual labor. But, they, um, they were? They actually planned, you know, to build the house. Jeez, they did, they did wait, not do the uh, labor. Did they build the goddamn house or not with their own tools? Hey, hey, uh, stop. Well, no, Going insane. Okay. Yeah, Michelle, Thank uh, Adam, you. Adam, oh, Adam were, were okay. and weren't sounded exactly the same. When she says it, she, you can't tell the difference between the two words. All right, so they weren't actually, they didn't get any sawdust on them. No. Okay. All right. Yeah, it only took 15 minutes. That's a big... <laughs> All right, Michelle, All right. What, what exactly can we do to help? Well, I need to know how to tell. Um, she's in so much denial right now because she just draws, um, like, materialistic things towards herself when she doesn't have any emotional support. Like that, People do that. That's yeah, not unusual. And, um, Especially addicts. They look for all kinds of ways to make themselves feel better. Does, I, she, does I, she work? Is she making money? Yeah, she is, but not enough to cover the mortgage. UP, what, UPS driver? What's the question? Well, Michelle, what can we do I need help? to know how to tell her without, you know, having her... Um, react? It, yeah. She's, she's going to react. I, she just is. I, I suggest that you make it as uniform a message as possible from everyone involved. From you know, Make sure your fiancé is there, the brothers, everybody. Well, here's the deal. You're living with your fiancé in a house. You're going to school. He's working. You have every excuse in the world. It's not as if you just moved out from Europe and we're looking. We're apartment hunting, you know? I mean, you don't have to get into a full confrontation with her. And by the way, I hate people that do this. It's, yeah. it's, it's blackmail. What it is is I will spin out if I hear anything close to no, so I'll scare everyone S-list to say no to me at any time. Mm -hmm. And eventually what people do is they just start lying to you. Instead of saying, you know, I'm not comfortable moving in, we got a good thing, and I think we're going to stay here. They start saying stuff like, well, uh, I talked to the dean at the school, and he said if anyone in a 25-mile radius would forfeit their... Right. People just start lying. You start it's, walking on eggshells. You never get anyone to do anything else. It's just they resent you and lie now. Yes. You can curtail it for a little bit. They might do a thing or two that you wanted them to do, but they just resent the hell out of you. Now, this woman seems a little chaotic. Oh, yeah. I, I do agree, enlist the brother's help on this one. 
But don't get into a big discussion with it. It's just, no, just uh, a, you, I talk it, to my fiance. We're comfortable where we but, are. But I, I think everybody's got to be clear and together and uniform. And and that's it. If she spins out, she's spinning out by herself. Right. She's going to go nuts out there, and, and that's that. And, and here's something that's uh, a good tip for everybody. Everybody, just use your own measuring stick, your own yardstick. If you decide something is fair, something is equitable, and be fair about it. I mean, uh, don't just weave your own narcissism into it. Michelle's really... mom thinks things are equitable the way she set them up. Right. But what I mean is, is if I say to somebody, look, I'm not going to do this or I'm not going to do that, they can spin out, they can freak out, they can stomp their feet, and I'll sleep like a baby. I don't care if it's my mom, my sister, mm -hmm. or the Pope. I'll say whatever it is to them. I don't care how they react if I'm totally comfortable that I'm being fair. Yeah, I mean, and if you have yeah. that, you're all right. And, and you think, through, you that's think, your problem. No, think who yes. you're advising to use their own judgment now. Well, I'm saying you have to get that yardstick. I mean, you have to you have to acquire it. Yeah, you have, you have to, to be fair. Yeah, you do. Well, everybody thinks they're fair. But I think that's it makes problem it takes, right now. It takes two to make an issue blow up into something that, to a proportion, it shouldn't be. You know, and if she goes in with more of a lackadaisical attitude that you know, look, this is just my decision, and there right. you go. It's it's just don't. It takes don't two to fight. You know, don't don't, don't provide the uh, propellant ammunition. for the fire. Don't abandon yeah. them. Be be available. Be consistent. Right. All right. But you don't have to. You have every right. To do what you think is right with your life right now, Desiree. Desiree. Yeah, I'm here. Right. You're 16. What's going on? Um, yeah, I'm 16. Um, about August, I went out with this 22-year-old uh, guy, and he ended up using me, but not all the way. If you know what I mean. No. Like, no, we didn't. We didn't have. And of course, but he like he pretty much did everything, you know. Yeah. Him and I. Mm -hmm. Like uh, oral sex. Hear my voice crack when oh, I even think about yeah. oral sex. Yeah. No, uh, um, oral sex. Yeah. And yeah. And then what? Yeah. And he's. I don't know. I. Ever since that night was over, I felt like it was just totally wrong. What he did to me was wrong. Well, it's illegal for one thing. Yeah, I know, and I just feel like I feel to he won't even speak to me anymore, and that makes me feel even more like angry. Was this your first sexual experience? No, it wasn't. Did he dump you? No. He was just done with her after that night. Yeah. Oh, it was just the one night. Yeah. I thought yeah. you'd won out on a few dates or or won out more than once. Nah, and like I don't, I'm thinking of reporting him, but I don't know. Mm. I just like don't know what 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 would happen if I did. Nothing. Before he, I just have one question. Before he did not call you back, did you feel like he had used you, or were you a participant in the whole situation? Like, were you digging I, it that night? I still, I I felt used. Like as soon as I was, right. and plus you wailed. But you didn't answer. No, no, she felt used. I, I mean that night. Yeah, but night. you felt used. If he wanted to go out on many more dates with you, would you have felt used about that night? Probably still, yeah. And it's, it's kind of a catch twenty two because it's that guy with his feelings making her feel that way. Yeah. It's not the guy that's going to come back and make her feel okay. All right. Did, that, he, he, did he force it on you, or, or did you just decide not to say no? Well, she's not, but I she's know. 16. She can't consent to a 22-year-old. Yeah, that's yeah. It's illegal. There's no, there's, yeah. She's not well, legal in the law, not able to render consent. Hmm. She just can't. All right, but, uh, you know, I know our listeners uh, get especially... Uh, victims who are listening to this show get all uh, burned up when I talk this way, but uh, I don't think you're going to get much through the courts on this one. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you need you had, to report it you for yourself, had what's, what's called a, basically a one night stand, and you didn't even have intercourse. And sixteen is not fourteen, and, but it's and it's not eighteen either. It's, but it's contributing it, to the delinquency of mind. It's yeah, but I I, I think they're going to throw this out. I, I don't think there's well, anything it, here. It probably would. And I don't be think much... her reasons are real good. No, she probably, I think yeah. she's just more angry. Probably and wouldn't get much satisfaction out of it, and but it might create a record for someone in the future if he's doing this kind of thing all the time. But Desiree, more importantly, you need to watch your choices for guys. That you, please stay with people your own age. Yeah. Be realistic about who these people are. Where's oh, your yeah. Where's your dad? Oh, he's not here. Yeah. Do you feel kind of angry at him? Um, I guess. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I do. 
Yeah, so I, I think this more sort of triggered something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's more here than the guy. Yeah. It, it sort of uh, unearthed something that was in you, and that's why the anger, even though it was an event that happened some months ago, and even though it was consensual, all of a sudden there's an energy there. And any time there seems like uh, more energy than what the situation would uh, would call for, like, uh, you ever get someone like, behind you in line at the market, and they're, like, trying to get the, they're in the 10 item line or whatever, and someone will just start crying or something, and they're like, I, I shouldn't have got the peaches. I didn't know you are going to count each peach as, as an individual item. And you start thinking, whoa, baby, whoa, cool, chill. What's And, and then you start arguing about the peaches, and you start thinking, wait a minute, what's going on? Mm -hmm. There's, like, there's an energy. There's it's too not much. about the peaches. There's, there's, else there's too it. much here, and... Uh, I'm not saying this guy's not a pig, and I'm not saying what he did uh, wasn't wrong, but uh, there's there's some energy here More picking up uh, yeah, yeah. on it. And he, you're, I would say her energy would be better spent sort of reflecting on yes. on what she's doing and, and, and maybe a little therapy and dad and loss and all that junk rather than just bringing this guy through course. Because they could lock him up. They could give him the chair, and you could stand there and watch him fry and you'd still be pissed off on the way back to the car. And go find another guy to do this with. That's an even better point. All right. Now that uh, we've ground the show to a halt, I want to uh, play a song from uh, Leah Andrioni. Uh, this is off of uh, Alchemy. Is it queued up there, Brett? There's the head nod. It's called Sunny... Oh, sorry, Sunny Day. Oh, halfway into the song. It, it drives me insane. All right. And don't erase the uh, title of the song into the song. It always drives me nuts because I look up and I go, Hey, that was uh, the, uh, you know, that song from uh, Leah Andrioni. Sunny day. Thank you, Sherry. Man, I couldn't type I couldn't type that out in a month, but you just did in uh, five seconds there. Beautiful and uh, fast fingers. All right. Leah Andrioni, Alchemy is the name of the CD. We'll take a uh, little break and we'll be right back. There's the finger. Smell that finger, friend. <sighs> it is Loveline. Lee Andrioni is here. Alchemy is the name of the CD. The Goo Goo Dolls will be in here tomorrow night. Their uh, CD is not called Alchemy, but we'll, uh, we'll find out the name of it when they come in here. And it's back to the phones we go. Brandy, you're 25. Yes. Hey. 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 What's going on? Well, um, my question is, basically, um, my husband is... He likes to go to, like, he'll go to Vegas with his friends, and he'll go to, like, topless bars and things like that, like a peep show in New York. And I'm just trying to figure out, it really bothers me. And Does he, he know that? What? Does he know that it really bothers you? Um, yeah, I think he kind of figured it out when we, when we had it out in New York City. Why but should he have to figure it out? Why don't you tell him how much it bothers you? Oh, I had before, and he, I guess he just pushes it aside. Wait, are you in some sort of terminal? Yeah. I'm working at the airport. Oh, for crying out loud. Wow. Adam. Oh, come on, give me a dollar. What airport? Um, Salt Lake. That's my favorite airport. <laughs> they have the most level landing strips there. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I like landing. Nice, yeah. If we could only go through Salt Lake instead of Denver all the time. Mm. Yeah, Denver's not fun. Um, uh, uh, all right, so we're back at the uh, new... You know, I... I know maybe, Drew, you haven't been to these peep shows in a while, but they have them in New York. They have them everywhere, but last time I was in New York, I went to one, and the problem with the peep show is you look through the hole, and the peep show chicks, they keep their stuff in the peep show area, and I was looking through the hole, and I saw like a tote with like some diapers and a sweater hanging uh, out of it and a collapsible stroller and i was like ruined it come on baby yeah. you should give me 10 bucks for this now i'm not gonna be able to yank one off that's horrible yeah. and a yeah. thing of pampers hanging out of a thing and Once it's like again. a box of tampons sitting up on a shelf <laughs> and it's like oh men really don't want to be reminded that women are human beings not at the titty bar we don't we go there to escape Th that's what he told me to see something different and I just know, should I continue to be a, a bitch wife, or should I just try and get over the insecurity? Well, here's, hmm. uh, we don't have a, a hard, fast rule on this. I mean, it's whatever the couple is into. But here's the deal. You should meet somewhere in the middle, because if there's something, 
he, he's the one that's pissing you off, he should do less of it. And right. if there's something he likes to do, you should let him do some of it. You know what I think you should do? What? Ask him if he minds if you and I go to a male strip bar tonight. And if I he doesn't, he, then cool. He doesn't care at all. He could, he, he, he'd let me do anything. All right, what's your address? <laughs> he may just say that because he knows you're not going to do it. No. He, but it's not fair screwing, uh, swapping genders or swapping biologies here or doing a 180 because there are certain things that men are sort of inherently more interested in and there's certain things that women are inherently more interested in and going to the uh you know strip club with the guys kind of thing is uh, is in the spectrum of of normal behavior even for male uh, married males but maybe not every night mm. oh not every night no but why are you uptight about this because there's usually some history um, probably insecure just because I don't, I don't look like my wedding picture anymore. If you want to go there, <laughs> yeah. So you made the mistake. You dieted right for the pictures, right? Yeah, I did. That's right. And now, how, how, how much did you weigh in the wedding picture? About one twenty-seven. And mm -hmm. what do you weigh now? About one forty-seven. See, you should have bulked up to one sixty-five. Now everyone would be going, "My God, you look amazing." <laughs> this married <laughs> life is really suits you. <laughs> I just really think that he should be your, your mother of his two children. Mm -hmm. He should be more respectful of your feelings. I mean, for him to do it once in a great while is one thing. But it sort of it really depends on what his motive is. I mean, I, I think I, it's the guys for most of it. I know there's. I go to a strip club maybe five times a year with a handful of guys. They're all married and it's totally innocent and they don't mean a thing and their wives don't care and it's a zero. It okay. just doesn't mean a thing. Okay. And uh, on the other hand, it could mean a lot. It just depends. Mm. It's usually a zero, but I, I, I mean, a guy you should just be able go to there, and it's not. It's not like you want to do anything with them. You just go well, listen. He couldn't get laid if he tried in one of those places. Anyway, Lord knows. Okay. I had to go to the one uh, in North Hollywood like fifty-seven times before I even got a handshake. Oh, okay. So that's the other thing. Women think that just because uh, they married this guy, uh, all chicks are into him universally. But he's just another slob with a bad mustache <laughs> who's uh, sitting well, out in the crowd nursing the, the cores. The, p the guys that are viewing these, most women hate the guys for, for looking at them and viewing them. That's true they, too. Is, is he exceptionally good looking? Yeah, I think so. All right, but in, in, you know, Leah wouldn't be into him, right? Yeah, he. Pro I mean, he probably has. I just maybe I should go with him one night so I could see that it's see, not. Sure. Even. That's well, what I was sure. going to just say. Why don't you? This alive. What? Yeah, why don't you have wives' night? You can all bring. Everyone can bring their wives. <laughs> well, I'm just saying <laughs> maybe they could enjoy the experience together. That could be sexy. You bring yeah. like some needlepoint or something to do. It'll be great. <laughs> bring well, the kids. I considered it, so maybe if I do, then I won't. It won't be so taboo to me, and I yeah. won't. Maybe does but but guys. Brandy, are, first off, with the name like Brandy, you really should be a little hipper to this stuff. I know. <laughs> uh, are are you? He, he, I'm going to give you one of two one of two options. It has to be either one of two. Okay. Either you uh, are a little bit naive, a little bit old-fashioned, uh, haven't been around the block too many times, and just have old-fashioned thoughts about marriage and relationships and that kind of stuff. Or your dad is Russ Myers, and he, your dad is like a porn director, and you're having a kind of a reaction to it. Okay. Did your dad cheat on your mom? I didn't, but he does a lot of the uh, the licking at other women and stuff. Yeah. And I kind of I hear my mother talking when I talk to my husband. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, God, what am I mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, here's. We find out what her job is at the airport too. I might tell <laughs> the customer service maybe. She probably uh, wrangles the uh, produce sniffing dogs or something. Here's the deal. I've never met a woman who had a serious problem with a guy doing. Um, doing the couple times a year when the buddies are uh, flying from out of town kind of thing, unless she, there was a little issue going on there. And it sounds like uh, Brandy's got a little history with Dad and Mom and yeah. this issue. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's, it's true, or I was going to say sad, but it's not sad. People don't have a history with things, generally just don't care. Yeah. It's just... Just don't care. I it's actually went to my very first strip bar this year, and I, it was unbelievable to me how many men were not watching the stage. And there are like fully, beautifully undressed women up on the stage dancing, and men are having conversations and doing business at a table. I mean, it's really not as intense as you probably think. And people, 
it, it's like, look at it this way. You go to the museum, you don't leave with any of the paintings, you don't go home and paint in a car, you don't paint off in the car, you don't, <laughs> <laughs> you don't squeeze that tube of oil things uh, out in the parking lot. You just go to the museum, you walk around, you go, hey, that's great, that's nice, I appreciate that, that's beautiful. You spend a couple hours and, then and you, you go leave. you home to what's comfortable. You go home and you stare at your dogs playing poker your dogs, and you're happy. Yes. That's, uh, that's, that's what it is. That's what the porn experience is. Randy. Yeah. You're 22. Yep. What's going on? Uh, first of all, I saw you guys on, on Hollywood Squares last week, or a couple of weeks ago, actually. You guys were pretty cool. Right. Thanks. I've never seen you before until then. It was an interesting experience. They stuffed us both into one of those squares, and I didn't know how stupid we looked until I saw it uh, mm -hmm. myself. I thought yeah, we were looking pretty good. cool in there, but then I saw it on TV and I said, we look like <laughs> jackasses. Well, I got a question for you. Difference between orgasms as in clitoral orgasms and vaginal orgasms? Why do you ask? Okay, which enhances the clitoral as orgasms more as far as you're anything? Gonna, you're going to give us a multiple choice? Are. Pardon me? Are you giving us a multiple choice? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Just give me an idea of, uh, why, of why like do positions you, or whatever. Why? Anything. Why? What, what, where does this question come from? Why? Because I've noticed that there's sometimes where I can have an orgasm one way, and then there's another way where I can't. You know what I mean? Not just simply by penetration, but there has to be some kind of other stimulation involved. That's normal. I know. But I'm trying to figure out, you know, like if there's different positions or something. You're going to have to figure it out for yourself. Everybody's different. Okay. You're yeah, that's like me calling and saying, what part of my ass itches? <laughs> No, oh, God. No, it is. Like, uh, uh, how the hell do you know? <laughs> you just go uh, no, stick I mean, your hand general, up there and figure it out. Me, but in general. Because, I mean, I've read books on sex and stuff like that, and they tell you all these different All right. Well, listen. Um, those are evil they books. They tell you. All right. What hold on there. What? True, for you, for you light up the bonfire. Let me let me tell you. I know uh, Leah thinks she knows, but uh, I, know, I know how a woman works. <laughs> <laughs> women, most women need a little friction they don't just want that sort of just pounding unless they get sort of turned on by the notion of just that sort of sex you know that just sort of rhythmic uh, pounding sweaty repetitious uh, beautiful sex that goes on for upwards of eight minutes they like uh, most women like this sort of grind you know, they like to get on top and grind or they like you to get on top of them in grind, and that's usually where the orgasm can be found because it's the stimulation of the clitoris. I've not met many women. My penis is not cross paths with many women that could just have an orgasm just purely from the penis penetration and no other sort of contact. Meaning, you know, you get in some sort of push-up position and uh, and uh, see how little of them you can touch with anything other than your penis. I've not met many who can have an orgasm that way. I would love to meet that woman, but uh, there's not too many of them who are out there. It's usually something with the... Oh, God. Engineer Brett's getting a little happy with the sound of it. I didn't even know we had that one, Brett. Or was that Ann? Did you just slide the but mic under the desk? But life would be much easier for you, huh, if it was just, you know, get on there, do your thing. There you go. Thanks. Guys sir. would love that, and, and uh, that's how basically you know a woman is faking it. So it's not that, that, that like, time before and that time after, it's not like you're reveling in that and it's so wonderful. And well, what do you mean? I mean... <laughs> Adam's going to be talking about it. Huh? Right. See, okay, forget <laughs> about it. Before and after. <laughs> <laughs> you either watch TV or eating. What are you talking about? All right. No, okay, I mean, yeah. what I mean is, is when a guy's just on top of a woman, he's just sort of pounding away like he's uh, making a porn film, and the woman has an orgasm, that means she's faking it, she's sore, and Melrose Place is coming on. <laughs> Now, you got to get that grind thing going, and you got to get that rhythmic grind thing going, or you just got to get down there and do the oral thing. That's cool. But uh, uh, if you're having an orgasm, you're ahead of the game for a lot of women, I mean, during sex, whether it's uh, clitoral or vaginal. And stop separating them, you ladies. Uh, we, men, we got enough to think about. Yeah, if you're actually having an orgasm, count your blessings. Yeah. There are so many women who can't, and that is not cool. No. Oh. And, and, and do you know any who can have it just sort of through the uh, driving, pounding sex? You know, I, I do, Adam, actually. Really? Yes. Yeah. But I'll say, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm being you honest do? with you. He's looking at me but like, like nuts <laughs> right now. <laughs> really? But that, oh, God. How much of that do you think is psychological? Oh, I think a, a lot of it is psychological for a woman. Uh. 
I mean, I think most of it is psychological. Am I right? Uh, yeah, here, yeah absolutely. My, I, I might put over. I would probably put even be, uh, not even psychological, but it's an emotional intimacy that's required yeah. right, for here, the function. Here's and right, once that emotional thing is gone, no longer can mm, nothing happen. I nothing can happen if I don't if I'm not into that guy anymore. Right, but here's my theory, and and tell tell me what you okay. think of this theory. You show me a woman who you can just sort of bend over the uh, foot of the bed and go at from behind, <laughs> you know, butt slapping, and give them an orgasm with no reach around and no nothing like that, just straight sort of porn from behind, bent over kind of sex. Show me a woman who can orgasm that way, and I'll show you a woman who's a little bit nutty. What do you think of that? I, I, I am scared to touch it. Drew? I know you're you're going through your Rolodex of sex. Let's see, so the Tammy. I don't. Here. I don't know. I can't. I can't. You know I mean, maybe not nutty, right? but know a fan, maybe a huge fan of because, sex. Because 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 I, I I'm no gynecologist, but I really think that uh, women need that kind of like stimulation around the clitoris area, or as my grandma yelled at me the other day, it's uh, clitoris. You know, it Stop on, calling it clitoris. It really depends on the couple. That's how uncomfortable that conversation yeah, It really, was really depends on the couple. Because uh, there's... Uh, uh, okay. That whole G-spot thing is really basically getting clitoris from behind. Uh, it can be stimulated that way. Uh, I don't know. Okay. All right. That's just my that's my theory. No, I, I, seriously. The nuttier you are, the more apt you are gonna you're you're gonna be to have an orgasm without the oral sex and without the any kind of clitoral clitoral contact. That's my theory. Yeah, because then it's going all that orgasms going on in your head, and you're much more uh, li likely to yell like "daddy" or something <laughs> during it. That's my theory. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Uh, Okay, break. Right. I'm all charged up now. Drew, get I know, out of is here. Is there any cold water around here anywhere? Uh, oh, it's in the bathroom. I'll show you where it thank is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crampy Marilyn Manson riff. You know, just that uh, you have your headphones turned all the way up, and then that just comes in and just cuts like a knife at uh, 1248 in the evening. Lee Andrioni is uh, here. Alchemy is the name of the CD. I highly suggest you go out and buy it. Not only is uh, it good and she good and we good but Lee is what you call a friend of the show and I think it's important that uh, people support friends of the show that is the nicest thing thank you uh, God yeah the record that, guy Rob just gave me some code oh. he's up to something man. <laughs> there's like money stuck to the window right now oh sorry did I call Ron Rob again <laughs> I think I've done that twice I'll just call him Jetson that's what everyone else calls him Michelle Yes. You're 21. Yes. What's going on? Nothing. I just want to tell you guys that I've been like a listener for the past seven years. Mm. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen Drew uh, blossom into a prima donna? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Thank you. Not really. Um, and I just, and Leah. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you from San Diego? Yes, I, I am. To, he looks high school too. Oh, really? Yeah. What's I, your name? Michelle, I didn't go with you. I graduated in 96. Oh, oh, cool. Well, we went to the same high school. Are you still in San Diego? No, I just moved up to Portland. Portland, oh. Oregon. Oh, oh, when, nice. when were you listening seven years ago? In Los Angeles? I was in, living in Huntington Beach. Ah. Helix. Uh, what was the name of the, the, the team? Helix Highlanders, home of the oh, I'm dog. so glad she, yeah. The, uh, Helix <laughs> the, the Highlanders. Pollers, the Highlanders. We were like the little Scottish school, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> just, everyone should just, just pick a farm animal and stick with that. The <laughs> Brahma poles or we something. We were the little, the Scotty dogs. The Scotty dogs. Isn't that cute? But isn't a, oh, a Scotty oh, dog. Yeah, the, like the little black Scotty dogs. That is so, you know, I, I played football, so it, it doesn't really matter if you're just in like speech and debate and the mascots a Scotty dog but if you're on the football team and the, the, you got a picture of like uh, the uh, Scotty dog on the side of your helmet it's humiliating it is not tough oh but it wasn't on the side of the helmet wearing right? a plaid sweater they were actually kind of cute because they were like they looked like they were just pissed off little dogs that's what they look like mm. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, nothing evokes uh, more or less fear than the Scotty dog <laughs> <laughs> That's just something you kick. Wait, it was cute. It was cute. All right. All right. Uh, he looks rough. Well, we were yeah. the Huskies. We never won a game. No, so. he looks. 
Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, that's all I had to say. I'm fine. I'm honky dory. There's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Good. How's Portland? Portland is raining. Oh my. Oh yeah. We we're gonna go there. Where are we gonna go Seattle. there? Seattle. We're gonna go to Seattle tomorrow. Seattle. Seattle is awesome. I went for my first time on Labor Day weekend, and it rocked. Yeah, I love all that stuff. We gotta get I up love there. all that we weather. Got to get up there. L.A. is just a bunch of haze and and uh, brown skies and pissed off people. And uh, there's no the the thing that people don't understand about L.A. who come from places that have cities and downtowns they can use. You can't use downtown L.A. I mean, when you go to San Francisco, you go into the city, and when you go to Seattle, you go into the city. Or if you're in you know Austin, you go into the city, and that's where it's happening, and it's great. On Saturday night, you go into the city. Uh, you can't do that in L.A. I, I haven't been there. I, I've been there once in ten years. I did that uh, Virgin Cola spot <laughs> where I had to stand on a milk crate in the middle of some intersection way in the heart of downtown L.A., and it was frightening. A lot of people pushing stuff with wheels on it. That's always a yeah. bad sign. And just uh, people talking to themselves and crazy people is that wandering where the around. the clothing district is? Yeah, and all the clothes are way areas. too small for me or anyone. One of those areas. <laughs> yeah. Never been yeah, I do not like it down there. You know, I, I, we're just going to, uh, we're going to move on, I guess, it real fast. Uh, I was watching, uh, speaking of clothing, I was just watching something on TV the other night on like E where they're talking about how uh, LA's become the new fashion capital. And it, it always cracks me up when they go too nutty with the fashion thing. And they're interviewing some guy who's a fashion designer, and he's talking about the vibe of L.A. and what that's like, and people here, and what they want, and, and a bunch of other nonsense. And L.A., see, New York has this kind of vibe, and L.A.'s got this kind of vibe, and that's why we need to wear these kind of gauchos and stuff. And I was thinking to myself, oh, would you shut up? No one gives a rat's ass about the kind of vibe. You, you, you look at something in the window, it looks good, you put it on. That's it. If your ass doesn't look big and it's cheap, you wear it. That's enough. The kind of vibe. Is there a fashion vibe that you're aware of in, in some place that you go, and do you try to tap into it when you but go I mean, there? And even if there were a place you go, it would be where less than 1% of the population of this metropolitan area would be, right? I mean, Riverside and uh, Pacoima are, are part of Los Angeles area, and what's the vibe there? The, the vibe there is... Uh, <laughs> You know, the vibe there is like <laughs> stuff with reinforced knees and generic yeah. tennis shoes. Which is, and it, each little district is so different, spread out. Please. Hawaiian Gardens, what, what's the vibe there? Here's the beauty of L.A. Here's my favorite part about L.A., and then we're moving on because, you know, I always start getting into trouble. Yep, I, yep, 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 yep. I love to see people, and I've worked with uh, a lot of uh, Hispanic laborers in my day do, uh, doing the construction wiggle. And a lot of these guys are poor. They got big families. They don't have any money. They go to the thrift shops. They buy. They buy clothing, and a, a lot of them don't speak good English. And they just grab shirts. Now, a lot of the shirts they're wearing are shirts that have like a picture of Fat Albert and it says "Hey, hey, hey" on it, or one that says like uh, Van Halen '78 Summer Tour sold out with the stamp on the back. And it's always great seeing a guy who's from Nicaragua who basically has been here for six months, don't speak a lick of English, but he's wearing a Us Festival <laughs> <laughs> shirt. Or something good that says, like, where's the beef? <laughs> that That's the best part about construction. As a matter of fact, there was a guy who was, I work construction with, uh, a guy from, like, El Salvador, who was wearing a shirt that said, uh, making bacon, had the two pigs getting it on on it. I tried to buy the shirt off his back. He was poor, but he was proud. He wouldn't sell it to me, but when he went to the swap meet where you can get like 35 shirts for a nickel, that next week he came back with the Macon Bacon shirt. That's the spirit of the immigrant, everybody. That, that you, you tried to buy it from the day he'd had a court appearance, as I remember, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. He wore that shirt to court. Yeah, he did. That's right. <laughs> he showed up late for work because he was uh, at court. I was like, uh, hey, uh, Manuel, where were you? Uh, I said, court. What uh, do you uh yeah. What were you wearing? This. Uh, this is making bacon on it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> that's no good. Huh? He didn't really know what it meant. It was a couple of farm animals wrestling or something. <laughs> <laughs> we're making bacon. Stand in front of the judge with a making bacon shirt and a like uh, uh, USF uh, muff diver uh, cap on or something. Steve. Yeah. No, uh, twenty-four. What's going on? I've um, got a question. I got married when I was 19. i um, been happily married most of the time, except for within about the last 11 or 12 months. 
uh, wife and I have started doing a lot of fighting, just a ton of fighting. She'll, like, pick a fight to go out and disappear with her friends or whoever, and um, now she's just recently hit me up with divorce papers, and I don't know if maybe I'm being old-fashioned and trying to hang on to it for my son. Should I let her go? Where do I go from this point? Why does she want to go? Why does she want to go? I don't know. I've asked her. Uh, I've asked her if she's seen someone else. I've asked her, you know... We, would she be willing to get some couples therapy? Well, we, I've asked her with that, and she said she would, so we set up some appointments, and she won't go to any of them. Mm. If she is not willing, and she is hell-bent on leaving, there's nothing you can do about that. And all you can do is ask for the therapy on behalf of the family and the yeah. son. But here's the deal. I'm with you, Steve. Keep trying. Uh, if people want to leave and it's not over anything... You're screwed. It's like uh, someone comes into the hospital, they got a, a sprinkler key sticking out of their side. You can work on that. Someone's just coming in and dying. They're just dying. Yeah, if they you, give you no know reason I mean? to change or no reason to fix something, you're they're, screwed. They're done. Yeah, that's it. Uh, they didn't catch you cheating. You're not boozing too much. She got married too young. She's a different person She now. burnt out. She's different. You're different. She's tired. That could be it. All you can do is try to tell her, listen, we can have a child. Let's go to at least you owe me this before the divorce. Yeah. Have a couple sessions yeah. and see if you can't work it out in the presence yeah. of uh, some guys getting paid too much. And he's wearing a bad jacket with the uh, suede patches on the sleeves. John? John John's got to be asleep. asleep. He's been on hold for 109 minutes. He's well, 14. Oh, there he is. John, you're 14. You want to know what the average size penis is for a guy who's 14? Yeah. 14 inches. Oh, my God. What are you? 12, 13? You're lying. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. You're big enough. Yeah, whatever it is, it's fine. You whatever cannot tell fine. where you're going to end up until you're about 18 to 21. Right. You still you get you got a gross spurt, and uh, many other spurts coming from that thing before the day is done. <laughs>